you have your Bibles with you this morning, please turn with me to 1 Peter, first chapter, 22nd to the 25th verse. 1 Peter, first chapter, the 22nd to the 25th verse. And then we'll go to Luke, 21st chapter, the 33rd verse. Luke 21, 33. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not, not corruptible seed, but of uncorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is a grass, and all glory of man hath the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for getting us through this week, for this very morning even. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you, above all, for everlasting, eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent him here, that he could die for us, that we could have the opportunity to have eternal life with you where there is no sickness, no more disease, no more pain, no more sorrows, no grief, that we could spend eternity with you and your son Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus came here. He died for us, was buried, and then resurrected from the dead and entered into your very presence where he is now seated at your right hand, making intercessions. We thank you, Father God, for the blood that he shed, that, that by his blood you may forgive us and wash us and cleanse us from all our sins and unrighteousness. And we thank you, Father, by the stripes of Jesus, that we may receive our healing. Father, we lift up unto you, Brother Cesar's sister, Shalom. We pray you touch her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father God, that she would know you. She would know your son, Jesus Christ. That she would know that she can have this eternal life as well. We pray, Lord, for a miracle. For you are the God of miracles. You still do miracles. And Father, I thank you, Lord God Almighty, by the stripes of Jesus, that she can be healed and whole. And Father, pray for comfort for the family especially for Brother Cesar right now, that you can calm his spirit, calm his soul, and be with him and give him hope in his heart. And Father, pray for a creative miracle for Brother Shane as well, that, Father, you can make all things new, even in, in his body, in his organs, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, Lord, for a miracle as well. And Brother Chodon as well, for his healing, seeing Gypsy and his mother, her healing as well. Brother Tommy, Lord, for, that you would completely heal him and we curse any bad cells in him in the name of Jesus, that he shall be completely healed. And Pastor Jesse, he, that he shall be completely restored. And all those who need your healing, may they know that by the stripes that the Lord Jesus Christ took, that they may appropriate their healing as well. For you said, I am the God who heals. I am Jehovah Rapha. And you heal all our diseases. We thank you, Father God. Father, we do pray for peace in Jerusalem, peace on the Korean Peninsula, in Nigeria, Kenya, South Sudan, Sri Lanka, the Republic of the Philippines, and in the United States of America. Father, we pray especially for those families, Lord, and loved ones who, who lost, Lord, their 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 families and relatives and their loved ones, Lord, in this uh, in Virginia Beach, 
And Father, we pray, Lord, that you would calm their souls as well, give them your peace as they go through this traumatic experience, Lord. And Father, may the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God who saves us, Lord. You give us eternal life. And Father, we pray, Lord, for wisdom and protection for the presidents, their families, wisdom and protection for all the VCF pastors, spouses, all the members in Victory Christian Fellowship and in our entire family, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the provider. And we pray for 100% full-time gainful employment for every VCF member that need a job. And Father, that they shall receive that job, that you are the one who opens up the doors and opportunities. May people go to you to provide uh, all their need according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And Father, we pray for all of us, Lord, to be faithful, Lord. Be faithful to the end. That there will be 100% faithful service of every member here in VCF. That they will do their part to serve in these ministries, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all those who came out to the outreach last night. For the world is lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the laborers who are out there, who are serving you. The ladies also who are praying and preparing, Lord. Father, let us put you first. Let us put your kingdom first. Seek your kingdom and your glory and your righteousness. You said all these things shall be added unto us. Father, we do invite the presence of your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. We ask that your angels surround this gathering, this meeting, and protect us against demonic attacks, interferences, and disturbances. And Father, may we receive and have a heart that is expecting to receive all that you have for us, your word, your precious seed that is eternal, everlasting, that shall never go away. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be transformed and changed, our minds renewed. And Father, we thank you. May your anointing touch me, that the word shall go forth with power to touch each one. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your, your grace and your mercy. And to you and to you only, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I give the Lord a praise clap. For God is good and all the time. Okay, look at someone and say, I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God endures forever. The word of God endures forever and ever. We don't know what forever is. It's something that the mind, the finite human mind cannot comprehend because we have... Uh, just limited understanding. But infinite is on and on and on. There, there are basically two, two categories of things on earth here. One are the things of this world. And I'm going to introduce to you uh, a word here, two words. The things of this world are transitory. Transitory. Transitory means not permanent, temporal. Our human lives are transitional. Okay? The human lives are transitional. The body is going to die. The body is going to become from dust to dust. But our spirit and our soul are going to continue on. So it's transitional. So you must understand. Transitory is there will be an end to it sometime. Those are the things in this world. But we as humans are going to continue on to the next life, trans transitional, amen? So in 1 John 2, 15, first, let us address the transitoriness of the things in this world. In 1 John 2, 15 through 17, the Apostle John writes, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 
And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the things in this world are transitory. They are temporal. Temporal means there is going to be an end to it. And so the things that we see here are going to be gone. In fact, in truth, as the Apostle John saw that out of heaven, he saw a new heaven come. He says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So all the things in this world, what, whatever is even what we call new, those things in this world, all of that, the glory of this world, all the fame, everything, every material thing is going to pass away because there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And as a Christian, we should be focusing on things that are everlasting, not just on the things that are transitory. Transitory, where they, there will be an end to it. The Bible also says that man, uh, man humans, existence is transitional. In Psalm chapter 103, verses 13 through 16, the psalmist writes, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower on the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place there shall know it no more. Our lives here are transitional. You can get well, get sick, get well, but one day this body is going to die. Some people die, there are babies that die early while they're babies. Some people die teenagers. They die middle age. They die old age. But there's a, there's a, a point in time that everyone is going to die. The body is going to go back to dust. So what is eternal? What is eternal is the word of God. And the Word of God is everlasting. And that's why the Bible says that the bodily exercise profited a little, which is good, which means, which is good. That's good to, to exercise our body. But these spiritual things are going to be for eternity. Now, a wise person is going to put their investment in things that are going to be long-lasting, not the short term. So we put our things in the things of this world, but that the things of this world are transitory, so it's going to come to an end. Sooner or later, it'll be gone. We put all the investment in, in our health, in our body, and all that, and, you know, I've heard a lot of people say um, the most important thing is our health. It is important, don't get me wrong. Because I like having good health. I'm not going to lie to you. I like good health. I like good things in this world. But the believer is going to see that these things are transitory and transitional. They're not going to be permanent here. So if you're going to invest in something as a wise investor, if you will, you invest in things that are going to be of eternity that are going to be everlasting. And I know that sometimes it's very hard because we're stuck in this world. We're battling the things of this world. We're trying to make it through. And so we, we have all these things. You know, I, was, I used to walk up um, Namsan Tower in the morning. I wake up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I walk up there. It takes me from my house all the way up and I do some exercise, and I come down, take me almost exactly one hour. And I'd see grandpa and grandma walking up there, right? 
And let me tell you, uh, you better respect grandma because grandma is probably stronger than you because most of you probably cannot make it without resting. But I would force March all the way up and every, every morning I would, it would be tearing my muscles, okay? Let me tell you, to go up to Nam San and just keep walking straight up is uh, uh, quite a feat. And I don't care who you are, young, young, young guys or old guys, doesn't matter, but grandma was strong. She would always be there, she would be happy. Grandmas, they'd be happy, they do this one thing, okay? And then, then one day I heard this loud noise. It was a gathering all, of all the grandpa and grandmas, right? Because the young people, they like their 10 hours of sleep or whatever you guys like to do. So the grandpa and grandmas were all exercising and they said, Kong Gang Che Il, Kong Gang Che Il. Okay, if you, if you don't know Korean, what that means is health is most important. That's what it means. Health is most important. So they, they're chanting that. Not Te Haming Guk, da 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 da. Not that thing, okay? They're saying Kong Gang Che Il, Kong Gang Che Il. And um, so I know enough Korean to be dangerous, all right? But anyway, so they put health as number one in their lives. But let me tell you, one day, even grandma and grandpa are going to die. No matter how healthy they are. But what remains, what is going to transition, is our spirit. We are spirit, soul, and body. And I would go one step further that our spirit and our soul, which are two separate, are going to transition. So we need to look at the things that are going to be long-lasting, everlasting. The Word of God is everlasting. The first thing that I'm concerned about is when people are deathly ill, is do they know Jesus Christ? That's what I'm first concerned about. Why? Because that's really most important. That's really most important. Because I know that they can be healed. And the people that I'm praying for this morning are not your typical, they got a cold, okay? I'm talking about serious illnesses, people. Life or death, that's what I'm praying for. I pray for over 100 people every morning. I, I don't forget your prayers. But I need to highlight those so you can pray with me in agreement. Because some of these people need a miracle. They need a miracle. But more important than a miracle, they need to know Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because the Word of God, Jesus, is the Word of God. He is eternal. He is going to be there. He's, he's going to be there at their bedside, at, at, at their hospital room. He's going to be there when they, when they meet him for eternity. And that's what we're talking about here. This is not about just having a good, comfortable life. We're talking about eternal, everlasting life. Keep the main thing the main thing. Everything else seems to be secondary. It's like a shadow, a shadow of things when it come, compares to everlasting, eternal life. And thank God that his word is sure. And if all Christians can come to this point where you have absolute confidence that you know where you are going, these things that you are so concerned about and like things, the, the things, Jesus says this, this is what the Gentiles worry about, what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, where they're going to live, all these things. What Jesus says in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, it's time to put your, 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 your faith into the word of God. Because my God, my God is going to add all these things 
my responsibility, your responsibility, is to seek him first, his kingdom, and his righteousness. And he says, all these things shall be added unto me. And many of us say, well, I've been praying, I've been praying. You've been seeking the all these things shall be added. He, say, he didn't say to seek those things. He said to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Men and women of faith, let's begin to walk by faith. Faith in what? In the word of God. Let every system break. Let, let everything fail you. Let every person um, disappoint you. When you put your faith in the word of God, he will never fail you. He is faithful. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4 King Solomon writes, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, in the time to dance, and it goes on. There's seasons in life. There's the good, the bad. Everyone is happy when a baby is born. Amen. One of the joy. That's one of the few times that when I go to the hospital to to pray for people, it's a joyful time to see new life. It's a miracle. Every baby is a miracle. And I'm praying for a miracle in our family, too. Not my, with my wife now, but, okay. Amen. You understand. Amen. So we're praying for a miracle. So every week, I'm waiting for the news. Amen. So I'm praying for a miracle. And every baby is a miracle. And you better realize that and be appreciative of that. There's a time to be born. But the Bible says there's a time to die. Nobody likes to hear that. Many years ago, I decided I want to do what is most important to me, what I consider the most important thing. Most important thing to me is people's eternity. That's what's most important to me. Otherwise, I would go into business, make a lot of money, and um, help all people and all that. To me, it's peripheral. It's like secondary or tertiary. What's most important is e people's eternity. So we don't need to go out there on outreach. We don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. No one needs to do that. But we do that because why? Because there are people headed to hell. There are people he headed to the deep dive, if you will. So if we can be that person, people, the persons that can stand in the gap to stop and maybe help somebody or, or help them realize that maybe what they're doing is not, not, not the best for eternity, and maybe they can turn their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, then that's a good thing. We're not responsible for the results. We are only responsible for what we can do, and, and, and we, just, we just plant, we, we sow, the water, but God is the one that gives the increase. So we have choices in this life. There's a season also, remember, a season. You, your season is now here. This is where your season is. Soon, it may be another place, but while you have this season, here, be faithful. Be faithful. Amen? Just be faithful. And, all, and, and God is going to recognize that. But if you choose to put the temporal over the, the everlasting, eternal, God knows that as well. And we can make all the excuses in this world. We can make 
I can make 10,000 excuses why I cannot. But, but what about why I can and I will do and I will do it? We can. Yeah, there are very important things in this world, but the things that are eternal, everlasting, are most important. Matthew 24, 35, Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. I thank God that his world, word will never pass away. Because at the end of the day, for those who have devoted their lives and trust only in the word of God, if his words pass away, then we have nothing. I have nothing. But if his words will never pass away, then I have everything. Because all that he promises, he will fulfill. The word of God has a high position in heaven. In Psalm 138.2, the psalmist write, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving ki kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy wo word above all thy name. Let me show you the significance. So you have the word of God and you have the name. In the name of Jesus, I can cast out demons. I've done that. In the name of Jesus, cast out the earth. Bam! In the name of Jesus, people can be healed. Amen? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we can receive blessings. Amen? The name of Jesus is powerful. There's no greater name than the name of Jesus. So in his name, that's why we pray to the Father, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen? So in the name of Jesus... May his kingdom come and will be done in your lives. But in heaven, the word of God has pri priority, is above the name, the name. Do you see that? The word of God, and, and though the name of Jesus is so powerful and magnificent, the word has higher priority or precedence over the name. So God, the Father, looks at the, the word as the highest priority. So now you can understand why I have been saying and encouraging you, exhorting you, read your Bible every single day. When you read six chapters a day, you're going to finish the Bible in one year, amen? Amen. And so, what have we done? We have placed sleep, Skyping, Facebooking above reading the Word of God. But if the Word of God is of excellence, magnificent, magnified in heaven, this is how God views the things of the spirit world, which is everlasting. We, as Christians, also ought to put heavy emphasis, heaviest emphasis on the Word of God, not the things of this world. You know what I tell people? Just adjust your schedule. There are times, like you, that I've got to work from 6 to 8 a.m. in the morning to 8 p.m. at night, Okay. So instead of wake, waking up at my normal 5, 5.30 in the morning, then I got to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. No one in the world in their right mind is going to wake up at 3 a.m., amen? But what that means is if I have to do what I got to do, then I, I, then I move my, my schedule. That means less sleep, less uh, Skyping, less Facebook time. But I'm going to get my word in that has my priority. This is number one priority. Before I step out of my house. The 
is that sinking in? So you put your emphasis on the things that mean the most to you. Well, sometimes I can read it, you know, when I have time. You know, you make time. You make time. Really, you know, I don't know what kind of excuses we can have, but here I am, I'm the pastor. That's why I'm exhorting you. I'm telling you what is the right thing here. I'm, I'm speaking a word. I'm not here to, to, to make you do hard labor for nothing. But God looks at the word of God and as, as the highest priority here. Do I neglect the name of Jesus? No, of course not. Because in the name of Jesus, you can receive your healing. Amen? Yeah, of course I like that. Psalm 119, 89, the psalmist writes, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So his word has permanency. Forever settled in heaven. And so what should we do with the word of God? What should we do with the word of God? Just read it for poetry or for emotional good feelings? We should obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ was the example of obeying the Father. In John 8, 28, he said, then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. So, in one way, Jesus did not have original thought, in one sense. Because he said, I did nothing of myself. But as my father had taught me, right, the word, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So Jesus had this very intimate relationship. The son of God had this intimate relationship with the father. And... All that the Father did or said, Jesus did exactly. And so he would always please the Father. So if you have the Word of God that you can follow, and you obey the Word of God, you will obey the Father. You will please the Father. Amen? The problem is, in this logic, is that if you don't know the word of God, then you are doing your own thing. Jesus says, I don't do my own thing. I do only those things that my father does. You see? There's a difference. Well, I'm a good person. I do all these things. But if you don't have the word of God, then you, you're just doing it in your own thoughts, imagination, um, and you're not pleasing God necessarily. When you know the Word of God and you obey the Word of God, you please the Father. You please the Father, you please the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we can sing that song, pleasing you, right? Pleasing you and all that. But if you don't know the Word of God, I don't know how you can please God. So let us begin to get into the Word because the Word of God is is eternal. The Word of God is sure. The Word of God is magnified in heaven, settled in heaven. When we know the Word of God and obey the Word of God, you will always, somebody say always, always please the Father. Always. And that's why those who have been living in that manner are going to be joyful to see the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back in the clouds. When he's in the clouds, you're going to be joyful because, you know, all these struggles, as, as tough as life has been, you know that your life here is transitional. You're transitional. You can live to 100 years. My grandfather lived to 92 years old. Praise the Lord, right? He lived that, that, that long. But he died. 
Even Adam lived through 930 years, and he died because his life was transitional. And I pray that you will know the Word of God, realize the importance of the Word of God, and begin to obey the Word of God. You know why we do outreach? Because we, we just want to have good programs in this church. No, that's not the reason. Because we are laborers there. Jesus cried as he saw the many people that did not know the Lord Jesus Christ, that did not know the truth. He cried, he says, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. And that's so true. When it comes to laboring for the Lord, people pop up, smoke, all kinds of excuses why they cannot. And that's why Jesus was crying, because the laborers are few. And you know what? The faithful laborers, you're going to get rewarded. God is going to reward you. He remembers what you did. He will remember. I might forget, but he will remember. Amen? And he will reward you. So obey the word of God. Be purposeful in your life. But we need to know the word of God so we can be purposeful and obey the word of God. Not just based on our hearts, do good things for people and all that, because the heart is wicked and deceitful. So we can do things thinking we're doing a great thing, but actually we're doing it for selfish reasons, ulterior motives, whatever the reason is. But if you, if you have the word of God, you begin to obey the word of God, you please God. You pleased God last night because you are obeying the word of God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that there's no mystery about you. There's no mystery. You are supernatural. You are magnificent. You are wonderful. But there's no mystery of the word of God that you... Ex you reveal your word of, word of God through Rhema, that we understand your word, and we can obey your word, and we can please you always. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gives us the eternal life, that we can have the word of God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that opens up the eyes of understanding, that we may be able to have knowledge, understanding, and, and, and wisdom from the word of God and the rhema, that we will be able to understand and be able to, to obey your word. Let us be obedient children, obedient to your word. We thank you, Lord, and give us the desire and the heart and the thirst and hunger for the word of God, that we will put it first. Save the excuses for later, but just be determined. May your kingdom come and will be done in our lives and our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Will the ushers please come forward as...